Hi, and welcome to our fourth module in the Greenworks webinar series titled Killing Your Buildings, Energy Hogs, Retro Commissioning and Ongoing Performance. So what we're going to talk today uh, about is how do we actually go about uh, reducing the buildings and existing buildings energy uh, consumption. So we're going to talk about commissioning and retro commissioning or existing building commissioning and ongoing performance with measurement and verification. Commissioning, when we talk about commissioning, we're talking about uh, a third party independent verification that the energy systems in a building are operating uh, and performing the way they were intended, the way they were designed. We're talking about the energy using systems in a building, uh, HVAC systems, lighting systems, domestic hot water systems are usually the ones that we talk about when we're talking about commissioning or retro commissioning. Uh, retro commissioning is commissioning of a building that has not previously been commissioned, where when we use the term commissioning, we're typically talking about new buildings. Retro commissioning or recommissioning is talking about existing buildings. And we'll get into that more in a little bit. Uh, energy auditing, we covered in detail in the last uh, couple of these webinars. Going through your building and evaluating where you can reduce energy through energy conservation measures. Net operating income improvements is kind of an offshoot to energy auditing uh, where you implement the uh, recommendations from an energy audit, start recognizing those financial savings and then applying those that money, those financial savings back in to the building for capital improvements to save even more energy and keep that, keep that cycle, that circle uh, going. Uh, and measurement verification is we want to measure within a building where we're using energy and how much we're using um, so that we can better target uh, energy conservation measures and further reduce energy use. So I always say that the two biggest things that you can do to improve your existing building's energy performance are commissioning or retro commissioning and measurement verification. So these are the two biggest things that we can do to guarantee ongoing operational energy performance. It's one thing to design a building to operate efficiently. It's quite another to make sure it actually operates uh, to its potential. So we talk about basically a very simple three-step approach to, uh, to energy conservation, whether it be in new buildings or, or usually in existing buildings. And step one, make sure that when things are supposed to be off, that they're actually turned off. We go into a lot of existing buildings um, uh, during the evenings and to do a, a night walkthrough uh, to really assess the, the performance of the building uh, when the building's unoccupied and find that there's lots of things that are on uh, that really don't need to be on since the building's not occupied. So uh, make sure it's actually off when it's supposed to be off. The second one is that when things are on, to make sure they are operating properly, operating the way they're supposed to. Um, so when equipment is on, that it is not uh, operating inefficiently, heating and cooling, running uh, at the same time, full out, ductwork, leakage, uh, things like that. And then after you've done number one and two, made sure that things are off when they're supposed to be and when they're on, that they're operating the way they're supposed to be, that's when you start looking at, is there a better way? Are there improvements that we can make to the building? Can we upgrade the lighting? Do we have <coughs> old HVAC systems that we can uh, recognize energy savings if we replace them? Are there opportunities to improve the building envelope with you know, new windows or, or roofing? Uh, controls, building controls is a thing we get into uh, quite a bit. Do we, do we have an antiquated control system? Can we recognize energy savings by replacing the control systems, uh, and so on and so forth. So first we want to make sure what's there is operating the way it's supposed to, and then we start looking for ways to upgrade and improve the systems. So I referenced this Berkeley Labs <coughs> study uh, a couple uh, mo uh, of these modules ago. Uh, I want to talk about a couple different charts uh, here today. So Lawrence Berkeley Labs did an analysis of uh, over 640, 643 buildings over 10 years uh, and documented all of the different energy related problems that uh, that were observed in those buildings and analyzed the, the costs and the savings associated with those uh, with those improvements and basically found that uh, 
there's quite a bit of energy savings to be achieved, um, both in new buildings and existing buildings, and that those savings usually result in a very short payback, somewhere in the one to four year range. So the, this graph is showing uh, cost savings and paybacks for new building commissioning. So for commissioning a building that has, uh, you know, is, is just being built, <clears throat> what are the opportunities for savings? So uh, the commissioning cost uh, being down across the bottom and the energy savings on the vertical axis there, uh, you can see in this uh, in this example that included about 36 projects, you know, you, where you want to be on, on this curve is in the upper left-hand quadrant where we don't spend a whole lot of money on commissioning but recognize uh, a lot of savings. You know, savings on new building commissioning in that uh, five-year range with some outliers. <clears throat> where there's a lot more opportunity for savings, uh, is where we're using more energy in the first place. So high-tech buildings that have complex uh, and sophisticated uh, HVAC systems and use a lot of energy uh, to begin with can recognize bigger savings. So if you've got a healthcare occupancy or a lab, a building that uses uh, a lot of energy, there's more potential for savings than for uh, an office building or a school or a hotel that isn't using that much energy uh, in the first place. And since there's going to be some base fixed costs anyway associated with going through commissioning or measurement verification. So down along the, the bottom graph you can see those uh, uh, the buildings, labs, and, and healthcare facilities that use a lot of energy uh, have a much lower payback time, less than a year, uh, compared to some other buildings. And then this chart uh, is similar to the first chart and the scatter chart showing the commissioning costs versus energy savings for existing buildings. Um, and you can see that uh, on the, the scale here, these lines are much shorter payback periods. Um, you still would like to be in the left-hand side of the upper left-hand side of the graph, but um, you can see that for existing buildings, the payback periods were, uh, you know, mostly in that six months to a year time frame. For retro commissioning or recommissioning activities of existing buildings, and as we've talked about in some other of the webinars, there's a lot of low-hanging fruit that we can go after just by going back into a building and making sure that things are operating the way they were intended, which is, of course, the goal of commissioning. So I like to cover the commissioning process and, and emphasize that it is a process. Uh, not an event. Uh, some people think of commissioning as just a, a single event that happens at the end of the job when you come in and do the do the functional testing of the systems. And really that's just one element in the whole commissioning process. Good commissioning starts at the earliest design phases where the commissioning team is selected and brought into the project as part of the overall design and construction team from the earliest phases, representing the owner's interest, the owner's uh, QCer or you know, third party uh, verifier, if you will. So in the pre-design and design phases where they get the commissioning agent gets involved with reviewing the owner's requirements and the basis of design documents, uh, starts developing the commissioning plan based on the design reviews, the reviews that they're doing of the design documents and working with the design team uh, to make sure that the design is meeting the owner's goals, the owner's project requirements, that's the basis for any commissioning process, and that the systems will be able to be maintained and operated properly. So in a design review, we'll be looking for things like, uh, can we get to the equipment? Is there access to it? Can we, will we be able to maintain it uh, properly? Because if the systems aren't going to be able to be maintained, then they're not going to operate efficiently for very long. Then in the construction phase, uh, their commissioning agents do routine site observation, uh, conduct commissioning meetings with the, with the team, uh, make sure everybody's on board with the goals of the project and the goals of commissioning. And they work with the contractors and subcontractors uh, on the startup testing and planning for uh, the functional testing. The acceptance testing is really where um, most of the effort goes into the commissioning process. That's where all the functional testing is done. 
that most people think of as commissioning, that's the bulk of the work. So working with the contractors, uh, implementing the commissioning plan that was developed, uh, saying here's how we're going to test all of these systems to make sure that they are operating properly. Uh, those tests are, are documented and uh, verified and signed off on and those forms uh, ultimately are kept as part of the final commissioning report. The owner and the building operators could go back and recommission the building using these same forms and same processes knowing how systems were supposed to be operated. After the functional testing is complete and uh, everything is working correctly, um, they move into the building during occupancy. We make sure that the staff training is happening. A very important part of the commissioning process is to make sure that the building operators, the people who are going to actually operate and maintain the building are part of that commissioning process, not just during the functional testing, but all through the, all through the process. Uh, and then we make sure that the staff training is documented and, uh, and verified. Um, if there is any con uh, functional testing that needs to be completed, um, for whatever reason, because the system wasn't uh, wasn't done or wasn't ready to be tested before occupancy uh, or off-season testing. If the building is completed, for instance, uh, in the summer, then we'll want to come back in the winter and verify that the heating is working the way it's supposed to. And then during the what we call the post-occupancy phase, uh, typically we'll do a, a walkthrough, a 10-month walkthrough, uh, sometime before the one-year warranty phase is up just to make sure that everything is done and verified, see if there are any ongoing issues with the building and its operations, uh, interviews with the operations staff, and just see how everything is going on. And we'll talk about uh, recommissioning, our ongoing commissioning of the building, uh, because we want to make sure that the building uh, is not only operating the way it's supposed to now, but continues to in the future, because without uh, continued attention and recommissioning, Pretty quickly, the building will turn will will revert to a state of of chaos. Now things just change over time. Settings get get uh, overridden, and uh, pretty soon, before you know it, um, the building is not operating the way it was intended, and energy performance starts to uh, starts to decrease. So there's some misconceptions about what commissioning is and what commissioning is not. Um, it's not just a matter of filling out some forms. Commissioning is really third-party, independent verification. Um, so while we work with the contractors a lot, we are not, you know, some type of inspector. We're not just making sure that the test and balance is done. Um, it's not certainly not a substitute for the contractors' uh, QC program to make sure that they are that they've done their jobs. Um, contractor still needs to go through and make sure that they've done their portion and things are working to the best of their knowledge the way they're supposed to uh, before we come in and do functional testing and that should just be a verification of that. You know, commissioning is a process that spans the entire length of the job, just not somebody coming in with some checklists at the end and filling out a little bit of paperwork and submitting it. But when commissioning is done and the building's occupied, uh, like I said, we are not done thinking about energy performance. Um, measurement verification is really one of the most important things we can do. Again, measuring where we're using energy and how much energy we're using there so that we can target energy conservation measures. It's really just a matter of actually going back and looking at energy performance on a regular basis. People don't, even when they're looking at their energy bills, they are not, you know, paying their energy bills, they're not really questioning, hmm, I wonder why our energy usage went up this month. It's really the, the, the biggest thing that they can do to start identifying potential savings. So there's uh, some components to the measurement verification plan, both from a, <clears throat> a lead requirements uh, standpoint, but uh, also, and more importantly, from a can we actually use an MNV plan, a measurement verification plan, to help us reduce uh, energy usage on an ongoing basis. So the <clears throat> IPMVP, the International Performance Measurement Verification Protocol, is kind of the, the baseline standard uh, guideline that we use for developing measurement verification plans. 
talk about here is mostly based on uh, option option B, which is the energy conservation measurement verification approach. Basically identifying how much energy did we expect the building and these various systems within the building to use. What was the baseline? What did we expect those numbers to be? And then having the tools, the, the meters and monitors and you know capabilities within the building to be able to isolate whether it be how much lighting energy are we using, how much heating energy, how much fan power energy, how much cooling energy, to really get down to those major energy users and quantify how much energy they're using every every month, let's say. Um, so then <clears throat> every month we go through and we, we compare what the expected value was. We expected to use <clears throat> 100,000 kWh of lighting energy. We actually used 150,000 kWh of lighting energy in this month. Hmm, that's more than we expected, a lot more. Uh, so why is that? And with that information, you can start to go and answer those questions. Why are we using more energy than we expected? We verify, you know, the things were installed properly. Um, the, maybe the occupancy conditions have changed. Maybe the operating conditions have changed. Maybe something's just not working right. Maybe the uh, control systems aren't turning the lights off at night like we thought they were. Gives us the power to go and investigate. That's a key part of the measurement verification plan is set, set those parameters and then the step by step, okay, if we find that we are more than 10% out of what we expected the energy usage to be, what do we do? Step one, step two, step three, step four. Um, and then we've gone through whatever those steps are. Maybe the answer is that no, everything's working the way it's supposed to and our baseline expectations were too low. And if you continue to track month after month and you'll see that the, the energy usage is following along this consistent path and everything's working the way it's supposed to, well then you can reset the baseline, either up or down. Uh, again, knowing what to expect and then if it, what to do if it deviates from those expectations. That is really the key to measurement verification. And then uh, one key part of a measurement verification plan besides the, the doing it on a regular basis and verifying those numbers is the commitment to do it for um, a long time, typically for at least a year. Of course, um, the best thing you can do is to implement and continue to do measurement verification for the life of the building. Submetering is one of the keys to measurement verification. Again, if we don't know how much energy we're using and where we're using it, then we can't address these items. So uh, we kind of say that when in doubt, put a meter on it. Um, you want to tackle the major energy users in the building first and try to submeter those systems, whether it be lighting or heating or cooling. You know, if you can capture 80% of the building's ener major energy usage, then you're, you're doing pretty good. So you want to pick and choose where you're going to put your meters because there is cost associated with it. And you don't want to necessarily drill down so far down to the, the minutia level um, where you're really starting to you know, lose the amount of benefit that you get from from the, the, that level of detail. But knowing the energy usage, it can certainly help you uh, predict you know, future events, um, gives you real-time information, and with information there is power. So after we've commissioned the new building and have an ongoing measurement verification plan, um, we still want to continue a existing building commissioning program. Retro commissioning, that term implies that we are returning a building to its previous operating state, that we're turning, you know, turning it into that retro state where it was originally designed and originally intended to operate. But maybe there's a better way. Maybe the way it was originally designed isn't the most efficient way that it can be operated. So you know, we don't want to just necessarily turn it back to the way it was supposed to. Once you've commissioned the building or, or retro commissioned it, developing a plan to uh, a recommissioning plan, an ongoing commissioning plan to continue to test all of those systems every two to five years is a good uh, a good rule of thumb. Um, will do wonders to keep your building uh, performing uh, as optimally as it can. So one strategy you can do is that 
you know, you don't have to swallow the whole thing at once. You could set up a program where every six months you are testing and, and recommissioning one quarter of the systems in the building. So then that puts you on a cycle that every two years you've addressed the whole building. That's just one strategy. Or you can wait till every two or three years and just tackle the whole building at once. The important thing is having that plan and implementing it to keep checking to make sure that the building's operating how it's supposed to. The process for existing building commissioning is a little different than for new building commissioning, but again, it is a process. It's not just a one-time event. Uh, typically, there's an investigation and analysis phase where you'll go into, especially if the building's never been commissioned before, we go in, understand the systems, start developing the plan, benchmark the current performance. If you're doing a measurement verification program already, then you're going to already have that benchmarking data. But if not, uh, getting the 12 to 24 months worth of energy bills and benchmarking using Energy tar Star Target Finder or some other method uh, is, is a great way to start. We've covered that in uh, the last couple of GreenWorks modules, so I encourage you to go back and look at those. We develop an existing commissioning, uh, existing building commissioning plan where we create the procedures and the forms, testing protocols in which to go through and systematically test and verify all of the equipment and the systems to make sure they're operating the way they were supposed to. One of the things when you're going into an existing building to do, uh, existing building commissioning, that's different from new construction commissioning is there's not a contractor on board or subcontractor. So you have to typically engage a test and balance firm and a, a controls contractor to you know help with the verification, make you know verify the airflows and water flows and uh, help make changes to the the controls programs. Uh, whether the owner has one on board or not, or you have to engage one, that can be an important they're important people in the functional testing acceptance testing procedures. So you need to get them on board, go through the functional testing, uh, verify what's working and what's not, reset, reprogram, make the corrections needed to get the building operating as efficiently as it can be. And then after the testing, you know, certainly the documentation of the, the reports and the forms that were completed to make sure that we've got good documentation uh, that can be then repeated if, if needed be and included in, into the ongoing or recommissioning plan and schedule. Documenting all that is very important. That about wraps up our uh, quick overview of commissioning and measurement verification and ongoing performance. Uh, I encourage you to go back and re-review any of the other uh, GreenWorks modules where we've talked in more detail about uh, energy demand energy auditing uh, and benchmarking and hope you have enjoyed this series. Thank you.